Every year you set the same goals, to be happier, to be healthier, to go to the gym, to start a side hustle, to be more successful, to be more faithful, to be more grateful, to be more adventurous. And yet as every new year rolls around, here you are again, the same old you. It feels discouraging. It feels like you're spinning your wheels in the same place. It feels like you're wasting time. Luckily, I found the solution, a simple yet counterintuitive method of setting goals that has helped me to feel more in control of my life, more able to access the potential that I have, more able to achieve things that I never thought possible, as well as the most important thing, it's helped me to actually enjoy the journey. So watch on to learn the goal setting method that will help you to make this year your best year yet. But before you can understand the method I'm about to show you, you need to know one thing, why most goal setting systems fail. You've probably tried some of them before, smart goals, atomic habits, systemized goals. Don't get me wrong, all of these tactics are great, but there are two things that they all get wrong. First is complexity. There are a million things that you could be doing. And most goal setting systems focus on trying to fix everything at once with a hundred different habits. This is like trying to put out a thousand fires at once. You run around with a little bucket trying to put out one fire at a time while the other 999 just get bigger. Eventually you get exhausted, you give up and the fires grow even larger. The problem is that you're dividing your energy trying to achieve everything all at once which actually means that you end up achieving nothing. The author Oliver Berkman puts it beautifully. There is the sense that despite all this activity, even the relatively privileged among us rarely get around to doing the right things. We sense that there are important and fulfilling ways we could be spending our time, even if we can't say exactly what they are, yet we systematically spend our days doing other things instead. This gap between what we sense we would like to be doing with our time versus what we actually end up doing with our time is important and we're gonna come back to it in a moment. The second way most goal setting systems fail is by focusing on just one piece of the puzzle. To make changes that really matter, you have to have what I call the four M's of personal transformation. First, the method. Do you have the skills, the knowledge, the tools, the course, the books to actually learn how to do the thing? Second, meta, short for meta learning or learning how to learn. Do you know how to control your environment to create the systems and to build the habits? At first, I used to just focus on the method. So I read all the books, I bought the courses, then I realized that the meta was even more important and that's when I started to focus on habits and focus on the systems and processes instead of the outcomes, but it still wasn't working for me until I realized there were two missing pieces of the puzzle yet to discover. The third is motivation. Do you really want this? Can you feel it viscerally inside your body? And is that feeling pulling you like gravity towards achieving the goal that you set for yourself? Or is the gravity of your desire pulling you in the opposite direction away from where you say you want to go? Fourth is mindset. Do you believe that this is actually possible to achieve? If you close your eyes right now, can you visualize this achievement as if it's already happened? Where are you? What are you wearing? Who are you with? How do you feel? Or if you close your eyes and try to visualize the goal, do you see failure or do you see nothing at all? The reality is that you need all four pieces to come together and interlock before you can achieve lasting success. And mindset and motivation come before meta and method. So it doesn't matter what habits you put in place or how much you pay for a course or for a coach. If it's a goal you're not truly motivated by or worse, if deep in your subconscious, you don't even believe it's possible. Well, no matter what happens, one way or another, you'll sabotage yourself until you fail. So that's how most goal setting systems get it wrong. They don't account for every piece of the puzzle. Luckily, there's a simple way to fix all of this and I'm gonna show it to you right now. Reflection time. Now we're gonna find out what you really want. Our objective is to simplify and distill down to what truly matters most to you. We'll find your true motivations and uncover the mindset that will make achievement possible. Here's what you'll need, a pen and paper. And if you prefer to go digital, feel free to use a note-taking app. I prefer a pen and paper. A few hours to half a day in an environment free of distractions. I like to do a quiet getaway at the end of every year to do this, but you can easily do this in a morning at home if you need to. A willingness to ask yourself some difficult questions and accept the answers that you find. If you wanna make real change, you have to show up and be honest with yourself. If you have those three things, then you're ready to begin. Now, if you don't have all of those three things available, and particularly if you're in a distracting environment while watching this video right now, then please pause the video. I give you permission to go away, save it, bookmark it, come back later when you're ready. It's important that you take your time with these questions and consider each one deeply. 
but don't overthink it or second guess yourself. You have the answers within you. The correct answer is the one that comes to mind. So write quickly and trust your intuition. Now, not every question will have an obvious answer. That's okay. You can leave them and come back to them later, but just write whatever that you can. Now, not every single question will resonate with you or have an obvious answer. That's okay too. Just write whatever you can and you'll know what you need to come back to and revisit later on. Now, some questions might seem similar or you might come up with similar answers for different questions. All of that is okay too. The goal is to see things from many different perspectives so that you can build up a complete and accurate picture of your true desires. Now I will provide some extra commentary as we go through with each question, but otherwise I'll just be reading them out. You can feel free to pause the video, stop, think, reflect, create your own answers, uh, and then continue. There are 27 questions in total divided into five different groups. And so once we've finished them, we'll meet up again and we'll talk about what are the next steps once you have your answers how do we actually create this plan to make your best year yet? So if you're ready, let's begin. Prioritize and simplify. What would your 80 year old self want you to do? Life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. So turn to your future self for guidance. Only you truly know what is best for you. What scares or excites you the most? What makes you say, hell yeah? We find our most vivid memories, not in the average, but in the extremes. So look for those moments and embrace them. They are where true growth happens. What are the one to three things that if done would make your entire year a success? Michelangelo sculpted David from stone by chiseling away the excess, leaving only what mattered. And you can do the same. Cut away the excess and leave only what matters to create your own masterpiece. If you could never talk about this to anyone, would you still do it? Don't chase false idols. Resist the lure of pursuing goals shaped by the opinions and desires of others. Do what genuinely matters to you. What would you not actually care about if you threw it away today? Look around and consider what baggage you're carrying from past whims and fancies. Everything you own claims a piece of your attention and energy. Release what is no longer needed. What are the nice to haves that on their own wouldn't really make or break the year? We swim in a sea of desirable goals and habits. Enjoy it, but be careful not to drown. It's crucial to distinguish the rare and truly impactful from the merely nice to have. Finding creative solutions. If you had to achieve a five year goal in six to 12 months, how would you do it? Think audaciously, acknowledge sacrifice. Limitations often create the most innovative solutions. How would this look if it were easy? Embrace simplicity. The easiest way is often the best way. Therefore, to achieve more, seek the path of least resistance. If you committed to trying this 100 times, would you be more likely to succeed? Persistence is powerful. Repeated action brings lasting change, and it's often the only way to uncover unexpected solutions. Achieving the unthinkable. What does your perfect day look like? Spend time and really think about this. Are your goals moving you closer to your perfect day? Is there anything stopping you from living your perfect day right now? What are your biggest fantasies? Go on, write it down without limits, without a filter. What seems like an impossible goal? Contemplate for a moment 
the meaning of the word impossible. Not able to occur, exist, or be done. Now, is that really true? Are these goals impossible? Or is this a purely mental construct? Which of these goals could you turn into reality? Take these dreams one by one and assess them for feasible transformation into reality. This is dreamlining, bridging the gap between fantasy and reality, turning what ifs into tangible goals. Present focus and gratitude. What's the rush? How else are we to get to know this garden where we have been sent, apart from tending to it? Remember that life isn't just about getting to the next milestone. The goal of the game is to play the game. What if this is it? What if nothing needs to change? Challenge yourself for a moment to be happy with exactly where you are, who you are, what you are. Maybe you don't need anything else. What makes you feel most alive? To create a life you'll be excited to look back on, find and lean into the things that make your heart feel warm. What are you doing to feel alive? There is a difference between existing and living, and you weren't made to run on autopilot. Take the wheel and steer towards the things that ignite your passion and joy. Take a moment to look around you. Do you like who you are? Like who you're around? Have something to look forward to? We are products of our environment. So if you're feeling lost and you don't know why, look to your current environment to find the answers. What would you say about your life right now if you were an optimist? The story of human progress is a story of creative optimists. In the end, the optimists have the last laugh. You may as well join them. Zoom out and see the big picture. What will your life look five years from now if you follow the same path you're already on? Every day lived is another seed sown. And five years from now, you'll be living in the very garden that you've grown. What will your life look like five years from now if you were to take a completely different path? Imagine diverging onto a new trail, planting different seeds. Your new garden will be a testament to the power of change and new beginnings. What's the big problem you could dedicate your life to solving? We are what we focus our attention on, so be sure to focus well. If your life were to end in one, three, five, or ten years, what would you do differently? Nobody lives forever, but we often act as if we will and delay things that matter for a tomorrow that never comes. Where were you one, three, five, or 10 years ago? How were you different? What have you already learned, gained, achieved? Take a step back, see how far you've come. Celebrate the person that you are and the journey that you're on. Consider who you really are. In what ways have you yet to accept the fact that you are who you are and not the person you think you should be? Be yourself. Everyone else is taken anyway. Play to your strengths. Use what's unchangeable as your anchor and not your chain. Why are you alive? What are you here to do? It's okay to not know the reason yet, but it's out there waiting for you to come looking for it. What would you be willing to die for today? 
Sacrifice shapes identity. Think about what you would make the ultimate sacrifice for. There lies your highest commitment. Okay, welcome back and congratulations for getting through that and for being honest with yourself and laying it all bare. Now you have all of your answers right there in front of you and it's probably a lot, but we're not gonna make the mistake that most people do with goal setting, which is to then try and put out a thousand fires at once and end up putting out none. We're going to achieve massive personal transformation by doing one simple thing. We're going to essentialize. Somewhere in what you've written are one, two, three, big, scary, audacious goals. If they don't jump out at you straight away, then look for where you repeat yourself for the recurring patterns between different answers. It's those recurring patterns that will lead you to the essential few. And if I were you, I would focus on the achieving the unthinkable section, because that is probably where you laid out your most deepest desires. Also look for fear, because the answers that you are most hesitant or resistant to express, those are the ones that you most want to realize. Now that you have all that, here's what you're gonna to do to create a one page plan to conquer the year ahead. First, write down your big three goals. And maybe it's not three, maybe it's just one or two. Even better, it doesn't matter how many it is as long as it's not more than three. Because remember, a man who has too many priorities has no priorities. Good, you're done, or at least you could be, and you'd still be 90% of the way there. As long as those big three goals are goals that truly come from your deepest desires, are challenging and at least a little bit scary, and are exciting. Now here's the counterintuitive part. Now that you have those big three, put them up there, they take the first half of this one page plan. Now everything else that you identified, here's the hard part, everything else that you identified, put it in one small section at the bottom of the page. These are the nice to haves, you've already identified that they won't make or break the year. It's the big three that will. And yet the trap that is so tempting to fall into is to switch the priorities. The trap is to focus on the mediocre many at the expense of the essential few, but we're not gonna do that. Now you have your one page plan and putting this into practice is very simple. Just pick one of the big goals at a time to work on. Now I personally do this in terms of sprints, so I will focus on one goal for three to four months of the year achieve that goal and then move on to the next one for the next part of the year. The rules are simple. For whatever period it is that you've chosen, this big goal is the priority. Then the first thing you attack when you get up in the morning is that goal. The last thing that you think about before you go to bed at night is that goal. And you can take care of the nice to haves whenever you want at any point during any day as long as you've already moved ahead the big goal for the day. Do this for a year and you'll be amazed by the results. And trust me, you'll be so full of motivation and positive energy and momentum because you're seeing these big goals, the scary ones, the ones that you doubted that you could achieve, that you could even start, you'll be seeing so much progress and positive momentum with those big goals, the ones that really matter, that you'll start to find that the nice to haves get this flowing, trickling down effect of that energy and momentum and they all get done too. But the process is still incomplete. Remember the four M's of personal transformation. Well, we've now covered off on the most important two. We've covered off on mindset and motivation. This is what allows you to steer the ship correctly, to find and orient yourself based on your true North Star, the big three goals. So of the remaining two, the method, well, that's obviously gonna depend on the specific goal and the actual knowledge that you need to obtain in order to achieve that goal. Now meta, as in meta learning or learning how to learn, that is beyond the focus of this video, but I wanna point you to what I found to be the best resource in terms of learning how to learn, and that is Atomic Habits by James Clear. In that book, he does a fantastic job of explaining how to design your environment for success, to focus on systems, and to focus on the compounding effect of habits. Now there is one more exercise that will supercharge what we've done so far. You already visualized the achievement of these goals in the process of reflecting and doing those questions. Now there is one more exercise that's gonna supercharge everything that you've done so far. You already visualized the achievement of those goals in the process of doing that reflection and answering those questions. This step is kind of like that, it's similar, but with one key difference. So you've already got your one page plan complete and I want you to go back and revisit each one of those big three goals. And I want you to visualize, but this time, don't think about how great it'll feel to accomplish. Instead, consider this, you failed. Maybe you gave it your all, but didn't make it. But more likely, you never even started. Now bring this situation to mind. I want you to picture it 
in your mind's eye. Where are you? What does it feel like? Who are the people around you? What are they saying? And behind their words, what do you think they're thinking about you? You failed, and you didn't just fail yourself, you failed them. Do you feel shame, guilt, fear? How does it feel to fail? Look deep inside your body, feel your heart. Is it speeding up? Is it racing? This is what failure feels like. When you're ready, come back. Okay, maybe that was a little bit heavy, but it has a purpose. The reason why we should do this exercise is because we're inherently more motivated by negativity, unfortunately. The problem with only doing positive visualization is that we get the feeling of dopamine from imagining success, and that can fool us into thinking in a way that we already did the thing without actually doing the thing. So whenever you realize you're coasting on a feeling of unearned success, then come back to this exercise, do the negative visualization, and revisit how heavy it will feel when the reality of failure actually sinks in. And so now, whether from pleasure or from pain, your success is all but guaranteed. So as you go forwards into this year with this newfound power to identify and achieve your goals, remember this, your life is a story, but it's an autobiography. No one else is gonna write it for you. The ambitions you have and the steps you take to realize those ambitions will become the story that you live. But the great thing is you have the power to write your story chapter by chapter. And I hope that through the course of this video, you gain some newfound clarity as to your true ambitions and therefore as to what this next chapter of yours is gonna say. But also a good storyteller doesn't just tell a better story, he invites those around him to live a better story with him. So here's to your story this year and all the good things it'll bring to the people around you. If you want a handy reference guide as you go through this process, remember that you can find a Google Doc with all the questions and a link in the description down below. And if you'd like to see how I've applied this process to my own goals, my own life, then go ahead and click here to check out this video where I talk through my personal goals and the process. And uh, I'll see you there.